Grace, mercy, and peace to you all. In the name of God, our Father, and our Lord, and Savior, Jesus. Amen. If you join me in a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks for this day. We give you great thanks for each and every day. This is the day that you have made, and we can rejoice and be glad in it. Be glad that you are our refuge, our fortress, our strong deliverer. Lord, today, as we look to you and we look to your word, may we, again, look and see how you are providing for us, you are feeding us, you are gracing us with your presence. We ask this in the name of the great gift, Jesus Christ for us, in his name, amen. You may be seated. So you may not know this about me, although I suspect uh, after about 10 years here, you probably do. I am a really pretty simple kind of guy. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I don't have a lot of high pollutant things going on in me. Um, just, I'm a pretty simple dude. That's okay. There's, there's simple people, there are fancy people. I am one of these simple people. Uh, and, and the reason I tell you that is not because it really has a lot to do with anything. But it, <laughs> about 20 years ago, I had the opportunity to end up in Rome, which was much fancier than, than I was ever used to. Uh, I, I, it's a long and complicated story that I don't need to go into right now, but, but I was with a bunch of Catholics there during this time. And uh, the, the point is, when I was in Rome, I experienced something I had never experienced before. I had my first seven-course meal. It was fancy. Right? I am an American. I am, I am a very nice, simple American. Just give me my entree. You know, maybe there's a side of fries or there's a side of fruit nowadays. Uh, <laughs> getting older is great. Uh, so there's, there's, give me my hamburger. Really, it's a hamburger. Give me a hamburger. Give me, <laughs> give me my side. That's good. Nice and simple. Just, I, I, I eat to consume the thing, I'm hungry, I want to be filled, give it to me in as quick and efficient of a form that I can grab with my hands and just shove in my mouth as humanly possible. So I go to Italy 20 some years ago, and they give us this seven course meal, which took a lot of time. It was like, like, like time consuming to eat this food. There's, there's all sorts of stuff that, that, that happens, there's kind of this appetizer, auntie pasta, uh, sort of thing going on. Uh, I can't remember all of the details, but you know, there, there was some cheese and maybe some fruit, uh, soup and salad, uh, pasta and meat and dessert. And there was, there was like a, a moment during it where they gave us sorbet that was before the dessert. And I was like, we're already to dessert. But no, the sorbet was there to be a palate cleanser. It's fantastic. I'm like, why don't we eat like this more often? I don't know. Uh, it, it was good. It was fancy. It was, it was this kind of completely unusual sort of thing for me. And I was thinking about that today because I think, I think of Lutheranism and the seven-course meal that Lutheranism is. Right? We've got word, we've got sacrament, we've got liturgy and song, we've got education and study. We have things with which to feast up, and they take time. They take time, and they are, they are festive things. And, I thank you, choir, for singing here. That's, that's part of this festive gathering that we have. You see, I see all people in red. Uh, good you got the memo for Reformation, those of you who are wearing red. I don't know if you feel more shame now, but don't feel ashamed. It's okay. Go home and put on some red or do something. I don't know. You be you. But thinking on all of that, thinking on all of this, this festiveness and the festiveness of Reformation, the festiveness of eating, the festiveness of having a seven-course meal instead of an entree. And I got to thinking on these texts. These texts are the texts that we use in every Reformation. <laughs> They're the texts that we have each and every time that this comes up. And in the Word today, you have a lot of stuff going on. You have a, in Romans, you have it talking about through the law, we become conscious of this sin. And as I was looking at that, it's just like through the law, you begin to feel this rumble in your belly. You know what it is when you're hungry? Right? It's 
one of those shared human experiences. We all know what it's like to have been hungry, whether we're then immediately able to go do something about it or we're not. You know what it's like to be hungry and you're like, Ready and give me something. Whenever I talk about food in the, the service, people after the service, they say, well, you started talking about food, and I couldn't think about whatever else you said. Well, okay. One time I talked about Dairy Queen, and I hesitate to bring this up, and somebody's like, you lost me for the rest of the service. Uh, okay. Now I lost that person again. Sorry. <laughs> Dang it. No more Dairy Queen. Uh, just to... to, to just think on that sensation for a moment, the, the sensation of hunger. To, to feel within your body that craving, that desire. I mean, maybe you've got it for something else, and you've got that hunger, and you feel it, and you feel it, and you're like, I need to do something to this. The law brings you to this place where you become conscious of sin. Conscious of sin. You feel that rumble in your belly and in your soul. And, and so I was thinking about the, this seven-course meal, thinking about Italy and, and how lovely this seven-course meal was back there in Italy. And, and I was reading about why different cultures eat in different ways, because this is part of the, the research and the thinking on this. And, and here is an American. I'm just trying to shove food in my mouth and get it into my belly. And, and there, the attitude, the reason for the seven-course meal was, was, was mind-blowing for me because it fit perfectly with this text. The whole thought for having that seven course meal is that the appetite grows. That you start with these lighter fares so that your appetite, not, not that you're trying to satisfy that rumble in your belly, but that you're trying to actually increase your appetite. You are trying to, to invite your appetite to, to an opening I mean, maybe that's just fancy Italian speak for, for, I don't know, we'd like to take a long time to eat, but it was to invite your appetite to grow. And that God has been speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking, and He'd been speaking in the Bible for, for centuries. He'd been speaking to His people for centuries, and He'd been speaking and speaking and speaking, and he'd been inviting their appetite to grow. He's been speaking to you, many of you, for decades, and he's inviting your appetite to grow. He's not, he's not taking you here. He's not bringing you here just so you can grab the, the burger of Jesus and smash it in your mouth, right? He's inviting your appetite to grow and grow and grow, and I'm like, yes, it's like the seven-course meal. He keeps doing that. And you have in the gospel this moment where that reality of God who had been speaking and speaking and speaking to his people, you have it then highlighted front and center where, where Jesus is talking with, with these Jews in, in this place. He says, you, you're all God's people. Here's what he says. Read it to you directly. To the Jews who have believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold my teaching, you are really my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. As their appetite, as they eat, as they consume, they're going to grow into this God, and growing into this God is going to be freedom for them. And then here's the thing that happens. They answered him. We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? They tell him that they don't need to eat. They tell him that, that they're not hungry. Imagine, imagine for a moment is as you you perhaps, you're at course three of the three-course meal. You've had your soup, your salad. You've had, I don't know, olives at the beginning. That's still in Italy because mm, good food. Um, you're there. You've had that food, and you're just like, yeah, the rest. Yeah. Your appetite is increased, but then you're just like, no. Or maybe maybe you, you haven't eaten anything, and you 
you're hungry, you just have the rumble in your belly, you just, the pain, you, you're there, maybe it's been a while and maybe the pain's gone away, but you realize that you haven't eaten anything and you're like, ah, oh, ready to eat, I should eat, I should do that, just, no, no. This is what he needs. This is what he meets the people who no longer have an appetite, who no longer want to grow with an appetite for God. Right? And you think of Luther, for, for all we know of Luther, this, this was one of when Luther had been raised on the word, had been growing the word, he had the word, but the word didn't fill him. The word was there, the word was around him, the word was moving, but, but it, it didn't fill him until, until he has a break, until he gets to this one, one place, and, and this is the heart and the point of Reformation. He gets to the place where he realizes that he has need. Because faith, at its heart, faith in the, in the core of its being is need. He needs God. So, of course, Neil, you grow in learning this, this need, the need for food that's there in your body. Luther had done that with God. He had grown in his need. We celebrate Reformation because we get to say we need to grow in our need. <laughs> that growing in our need is something good and helpful because as we grow in our need, as we become conscious of the sin that is absolutely, most certainly there, as we become conscious of that, we then also see that God is doing and working in the person of Jesus Christ for us right now today, but certainly in, in the time where he was walking upon the earth, the time in which he gave up his body and blood for us. He is working on that need for us, and he's needing a desire in you for the need for him. So instead of church time being a time to just stuff our face, it's actually a time to awaken our need. It's not a time to, to satisfy it, it's time to awaken to the fact that it is there. To awaken to the, the reality that this need is actually ongoing throughout the rest of our days, but that we, we as we gather for a moment, we say, yes, absolutely, that need is there. That need is in me, that need is something that I want to fill. And the great news, the, the wonderful news, the good news of Jesus Christ is that He is there. He's there to, to taste. He's there to, 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 to feast upon. He is there for you as, as you do, as you have here in this moment, but also later today. In this long meal, this long day in this Jesus, there are moments and opportunities that you will have in, in song, in education, in, in word and sacrament to feast upon this Jesus through the day, through the day tomorrow, through the life. And as you do so, you awaken yourself more and more to the need that you have. I, I sat here and I, I wrestled with, man, what do you, what do, you do for reformation? And the, and the simplest thing for me is that in the mystery of Jesus, in the, in the mystery of this God, in the mystery of this God made flesh, I receive. I receive everything I need that I didn't even know that I needed. You know, I, I, I think back to, if you've ever had a, a seven course meal, anybody ever had a, seven course, a large course meal? I mean, maybe you had something else. Think back, and, I didn't know I needed this, <laughs> but I did. Go have one. Go, go start one. Go feast. <laughs> go do something. 
realize that there's this need. And it's not just satisfying and hunger for the moment, but it's digging in and being present and in the mystery of Jesus, receiving everything that you didn't even know you needed. Because that's what your God does, He gives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your gifts, your good and gracious gifts, your good and gracious gift of life, your good and gracious gift of life that just keeps moving. Lord, as we gather and we, we have parts of this feast here together, as we receive your body and blood today for our worship, the Lord is also, we have song and we have word that, that are here, but also word past here. As we have community that is here, that is also past here. Lord, awaken us to your good and gracious satisfying. That in you, Lord, we receive. And that is everything. In your name, amen.